there it is sunday and i've been doing some sewing <laughs> actually i lie i have not been doing any sewing but i did get a sewing project started and i know i've been talking up the wazoo about my victorian morning gown project that i've been working on but i decided to table that for a little bit and pick up where i left off on another project that i have going and that is project edwardian Yes, I know, it's been forever and a day since I talked about it or worked on it. And I know I talked about the fabric on the last podcast episode, uh, but yes, I pulled out that linen fabric and I cut out the pattern pieces to make Truly Edwardian's uh, 1898 walking skirt. So that is what I'm endeavoring to make this weekend. So I cut these pattern pieces out yesterday and I'm hanging them up and letting gravity do its thing. And if you're not familiar with why you should do this, uh, it's because it's woven fabric and some of the sides are cut on the bias. So if you were to sew those seams together too early, you risk having sagging or puckering happening at the seams. So you're supposed to let the pieces hang, let gravity settle the weave, so to speak, and then and then you wanna flatline it and then stitch everything together to prevent that puckering. So that is why they're hanging up. Uh, but yes, they've been hanging up for quite some time now, a couple of hours, I wanna say like 15 hours. So I think that's good enough to start sewing things together. And here's the fabric in question. Again, and it's just a 100% linen fabric in this brownish, deep, purple mauve color. Um, very, very apropos. And then this is the thread that I'm going to use. It's not a perfect match. It's brown, like a dark brown, but I figured I'm trying to work from stash and, you know, be resourceful. And this was a good match compared to this outright mauve thread from stash. And as I mentioned in my last podcast episode and in a previous vlog, uh, Edwardian skirts were traditionally lined with this stuff called tarlatan. It's a almost like a very stiff kind of canvas-like gauze. And you know, while I do want to be historically accurate, I really do want to wear this for the summer. So I was contemplating cheating a little bit. So I'm going to take a little creative license here, cheat a little bit and not line it at all because I do want it to be drapey, flowy and wearable during the summer. And I feel like if I were to line it with the tarlatan, it's it's just going to be a little too stiff uh, for everyday wear. And I, I don't plan on wearing a full on corset or petticoat with this all the time. So. You know, I am gonna take a little creative liberty and just not line it. And I think that's fine. I did hop on the Foundations Revealed Facebook group and asked, you know, the experts in there and they said you can either line it with lawn, silk, or, you know, also as well as like another layer of linen, um, or you could just not line it. So I'm not gonna line it. So the first step that the directions tell me to do is to sew the center back seam of the skirt, uh, which is pattern piece D up until about nine inches away from the waistband to allow for the placket. Uh, so that is what I'm going to do. But first I think I'm just going to give this a quick press because we all know how much linen likes to wrinkle. So I pinned along the center back seam of the skirt and I put a special colored pin here so I know where to stop sewing to leave to leave this part open for the uh, for the placket. Okie dokes, so I've pressed my, my seam open uh, all the way up until where the fabric splits off where, and the directions say for me just to simply fold under the raw edges and top stitch them in place. Uh, however, I still haven't decided how I'm going to finish my, my seams to be honest. I might just take my pinking shears to it and call it a day. After all, pinking shears were used in the day, <laughs> so it is technically historically accurate. Or I might follow Bernadette Banner's example and flat felt all of my seams by hand if I really want to spend time doing that. I, I haven't decided. So let me take care of this business up here and think about it and come back. I'm all done top stitching around the opening of the center back and I did go ahead and go with the pinking method. <sighs> I'm just lazy, guys. I mean, if I can cut a corner with this and be historically accurate, 
I mean, why not? Why not? We'll save, we'll save the hand stitching for the finer details. Anyway, uh, that is what I'm gonna do. And now I have to work on the placket. Already I'm making mistakes. So you see where this pin is? This is actually where I was supposed to stop stitching. So now I'm left with about three extra inches of stitching that needs to be closed. There were two notches on the back and for some reason I only sewed up to the first notch. Anyway, long story short, I'm just going to unpick all this right here and then stitch in place. It shouldn't be too hard to fix. The one bummer is that this was just so nicely stitched on the right side. Anyway, I'm just going to manage the mischief here and it should all be good. <laughs> Guilty as charged, I did serge the raw edges of the placket just to save myself a little extra time. Uh, you know, the rest of it, I will not be using a serger. But anyway, I pin the placket in place and I'm just going to whip stitch it by hand in place. And, you know, I did I did go back and fix the opening. Uh, however, it's not the neatest job. I, I will probably go back and do a little finagling by hand later. But honestly, I don't think this is even going to be seen because there's a bunch of of gathers and pleats in the back once this is all said and done. But let me go ahead and install the placket. Uh, so, you know, when I do wear the skirt, you know, my, I'm not giving anyone a show of my bum or my petticoats when I wear it. So, yeah. Alright, the placket is in. I actually did a double hand basting just to keep things a little bit in place, but now I'm pretty much ready to just start assembling the rest of the skirt panels. And I will, of course, be finishing all the seams using my pinking shears because laziness and historical accuracy, that's what I'm all about today, apparently. of a conundrum. I noticed that the lengths of the side back don't match up to the back pieces. And I'm wondering if this is potentially because I shortened the skirt by three inches and I probably shortened them the wrong way. I'm not entirely sure. So I do know that the shaping is correct at the waist, so that's fine. It's just the length that I'm a little concerned about. Um, so hopefully maybe I can just true this edge up so it's even um, but I won't do that until the very end when I hem it so anyway fingers crossed I don't know what to do at this point I mean this is I will be totally honest this is a very fiddly fabric I probably should have weighted it down more when I cut it out or stabilized it a little bit more but yeah I feel like I'm doing a very slapdash job with this but you know what I will consider this my wearable mock-up or my wearable muslin at this point. But anyway, um, so far so good. It's a skirt and you know, I'm sure I'll get plenty of wear out of it regardless. I almost forgot to cut out pattern pieces for the pockets. Uh, the pattern does not come with pattern pocket pieces. Pattern pocket pieces, yeah, that made sense. Just checking. So I borrowed a pattern piece from my Lizzie skirt from Sew Over at London. Again, not historically accurate. I think what we're going for here is history bounding. So I don't know, I really didn't put much planning into this project. I just felt like sewing an Edwardian walking skirt. So here we are, we are making a history bounding Edwardian walking skirt not historically accurate. Don't mind all this pinking confetti all over my floor, it just comes with the territory, and that is why I have a broom and dustpan hanging out in the corner all the time. Anyway, one pocket is installed. I don't know how you're gonna be able to see that, but I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm installing these pockets the same way I would a modern skirt. Again, not historically accurate, not trying. But yes, I placed the pockets about three inches from the top of the waistband, like you normally would a skirt nowadays. So let me stitch this all in place, and then all I have to do is attach the front portion of the skirt and we can then assess what needs to happen here. The one issue that I will have to address later are these jagged hemlines right here. And I decided, I figured out that this is a result of the way that I shortened the pattern pieces. I did it completely wrong and, and here's what 
we'll have to deal with. But anyway, I'm not freaking out. We're gonna make it work. I'm gonna take my French ruler and just true up those edges ever so gradually, if that makes any sense. And you know what? Worst case scenario, I'll add a ruffle to the bottom and call it a day. Again, history bounding. All right, checking in. It is 4.30 in the afternoon. I am making a lot of progress with this skirt. The waistband is attached with all the gathers in the back and pinned into place, ready for whip stitching by hand. I am actually gonna catch up on some phone calls with my family and <laughs> get this done. But uh, one thing that I do wanna say is that I did add interfacing to the waistband. What they used to do was just tie either like cotton, a strip of cotton or grow green ribbon around the side because they wanted to reduce as much bulk as possible because, you know, again, waist wasp waist and that whole like very slim silhouette was very in at the time but because i'm not doing anything historically accurate i figure i'm just going to interface it because it is very weighty and it, it's not lined so i did want to add a little bit of reinforcement in here but anyway on to the whip stitching It is Monday, Memorial Day, here in the United States, so hopefully if you are in the States you have the day off. Uh, I gave myself the day off because, because why not? Uh, Dennis has off so we might get out a little bit, but I'm actually whispering because Dennis is still sleeping. I think it's about a quarter to nine in the morning. I thought I would get an early start and fix a little snafu that happened with my Edwardian walking skirt. Long story short, Dennis came into my craft room yesterday and found a scrap of fabric on the floor and started playing playing with the cat with it. And lo and behold, he didn't realize that that was an essential part of the facing for my skirt. So <laughs> I needed seven pieces for the facing and I only had six stitched together in the round. So. I have to do a little bit of unpicking and hopefully I'll sew in the missing piece and it'll all work out. Seven hours later. Well, hello. It is Monday afternoon, like late in the afternoon. Dennis and I managed to get out. We went to a really nice nature preserve trail in Brooklyn, uh, back actually in my old stomping grounds near where my grandmother used to live and I grew up. So that was really nice to kind of get to <laughs> check that out again. Um, but yeah, it was a really nice day and there are people outside having barbecues, hopefully social distancing. But yeah, I'm back, back in my craft room and I'm hoping to finish up this lady right here. Here is where we are. Uh, the skirt is technically done. I just have to finish hemming the skirt. So if you can see right here, I did pin the uh, the facing to the underside. So yeah, this morning I found that missing piece of the facing. I unpicked things and re-sewed it back together and things worked out really nicely. It's a little uneven, but you know, it's not noticeable. So all that really needs to happen now is for me to hand stitch the facing to the inside of the skirt. As I mentioned, I didn't use tarlatan. Uh, I'm just using the self fabric or the fashion fabric as the, as the facing. It's not interfaced or anything. Because it's linen, I want it to be relatively lightweight, but it still, I feel like, gives it that nice shape and what have you. Also, here is what the back of it looks like. So there's no buttons or anything, although I may add some snaps in the future. Uh, I just added some hook and eye closures to the back and it fits. I tried it on, um, but yeah, so all that's left to do is to finish uh, stitching the facing to the skirt and it'll be, it'll be done. 
Here's what the underside of the skirt looks like where I pinned the facing or the raw edges of the facing to the actual skirt. So all I need to do is hem the facing to the actual skirt using a blind hem stitch. Um, however, I want this to be a little bit neater because if you can see, yeah, this is very, very raw and jank janky looking. So I am gonna use this stuff here, which is, I believe it's called hem tape or finishing tape. Um, I'll, uh, again, words escape me. So I'm just gonna machine stitch this onto the raw edge of the facing and then and then go back and hand stitch the actual tape to the skirt, if that makes any sense. Needless to say, this is a very lengthy process of hemming, but it's going to be so worth it. It's gonna look very nice and neat and ah, I'm so excited to have this done. I figured out what this is called. This is called binding tape. Why couldn't I remember that? Anyway, I pinned it all in place. Uh, the facing is not attached to the skirt yet. I actually had to unpin all, all my work that I did earlier because I realized I have to stitch the, bi the binding tape to the facing first and then and then whip stitch it by hand. But I did add some extra pins below just to keep things flat when I do come back and repin it and hand stitch it into place. So anyway, let's go to the machine. Good morning, it is Tuesday and I am done. I'm done with my skirt. I finished sewing it last night while watching TV with Dennis, so it is completely done. Uh, so I'm getting ready to take some photos and pop them on the interwebs and, and all that good stuff. Uh, but I do want to show you what the end result looks like. So, and here's what it looks like. This is the hemming tape that I put on here. And yeah, the raw edges are concealed under there. And then I blind whip stitched or blind hem stitched the raw edges of the tape to the actual fashion fabric of the skirt. So if you look on the right side, if you look on the right side, it's pretty much invisible. So yay. Uh, yeah, ugly on the inside <laughs> as the saying goes. And yeah, there was some of this stuff happening. So where I had to, um, I don't know, there's some extra fabric. Again, this fabric is very slippery, very wonky to work with. Next time I'll, I'll know better, but yeah, I had to kind of fold things in and make it work if that makes any sense. Uh, yeah. And here you can see my pinking sheer edges and everything so yeah again not not the most beautiful work but you know it is a nod to historical accuracy i'm gonna go with that uh so make of that what you will all right i'm gonna go try this on and take some photos and start editing the vlog uh which you are watching right now so yay you guys i am so in love with the skirt uh, i kind of wish i put some embellishments on it like some pin tucks at the bottom but all in all i mean i can see myself living in this skirt all summer long i am actually wearing a petticoat underneath here believe it or not um the only thing i will say that i will probably need to do is create some kind of bustle uh like a hip pad as they called it uh, just to give a little bit more volume in the back and to really kind of make these uh, gathers flare in the back. Uh, so maybe that will be my next project. I can totally see myself making plenty more of these in the future. Uh, at least now I know what is involved in making it and I can use that knowledge to make an even better one the next time. Thanks so much again for hanging out with me and watching me sew this skirt. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the process and I will see you on the next video. Happy knitting, happy sewing, happy making. Bye!